Thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. This is my very first panel ever, or like presentation ever. I collected this data uh, in 2020 during the pandemic because I was so bored and I was working on other research projects, but I was like, you know what? I really want to do something on the furry fandom because at the time I was trying to save up to get a fursuit, but it's really confusing to navigate as a first like timer trying to get a fursuit and understanding, well, how much am I going to end up paying in reality because the pricing seems to just vary depending on the artist to such a degree, I have no clue what I'm doing. So this research came out of nowhere and I was just like, you know what, I collected so much data, maybe I should present it to somebody. So first, I'm an undergraduate researcher here in the Dallas area. Um, I work in the psychology research realm. So this is a bit out of usual, like ordinary sense. Usually I'm like coding memory or like understanding acculturation. So this is, uh, not really furry related, but this is fun too. So this is a table of contents. I'll be talking about first, what are fursuits? And uh, like, what do you call a fursuit? Because there's so many different kinds. If you've been here at this convention, it's your first time, uh, you'll realize that there's many different kinds of fursuits that exist. Uh, I'll talk about the types and then how much should a fursuit cost usually? and then my counter arguments, because even though I collected a bunch of data, I even think that my data, bless you, is incorrect. It is inherently wrong, the data that I got, but at the same time, I didn't like change the data to any degree, I just collected what was available to me. And um, the conclusions why, you know, researching fursuit makers is so difficult, because art is like, you can't put a price on art so subjectively uh, it, or it really depends, or objectively, it really depends on the maker and what they price themselves at, because it depends on what you're willing to pay for it. Uh, one example I could bring up right now was that $50,000 fursuit that was sold by Zuri Studios that was an auction, and I'll be talking about how auctions are really changing fursuit pricing in general as well. So first of all, what are fursuits? Um, first of all, it's like an umbrella term that you can use within the furry fandom because not all furries in the furry fandom are fursuiters. It's only like a very small percentage of people who actually wear them. Um, and it really depends on if you want to start fursuiting at the head only, paws only, full suit only. So those also completely change what the concept of fursuiting is. Uh, who makes fursuits? Fursuit makers, a simple term. So, uh, but also you can make a fursuit yourself. I feel like a lot of people are stuck to only commissioning fursuit makers because they're like, okay, well, I can't do that. That's like way out of my realm or ability. But if you really think about it, this is way easier than it seems. You can always start with just making paws, making a couple mistakes, and then slowly working your way up toward a bodysuit and a full suit and head and everything. So. Uh, what kind of fursuits exist? There's realistic, there's toonie, kimono, a bunch of kinds. Toonie is the most popular. Um, I know in this picture there's a couple like realistic ones, but it's a sea of toonie fursuits, I think. Um, realistic fursuits, uh, definitely the resin eyes. I have mine right here from Draconic Knight. Uh, and it's really fun to wear them, but it's also very difficult to see in them. And you're gonna have to sacrifice your visibility for a beautiful look, which is really worth it for photo shoots, but also when you're walking around a convention and it takes forever to get to your hotel room because of these elevators, not that fun. So take that into account. Kimono fursuits, they're a bit different. They were, from what I'm understanding, they were originating in Asia and they've become really popular in America recently. So they're pretty fun too. Terrible uh, like ventilation in comparison to other Western fursuits, but also you get really cute eyes, which <laughs> are kind of worth it in my opinion. Also, I like to call them experimental fursuits because they don't really quite, like this isn't realistic, but it is realistic because it has like a certain eye style, but then most realistic fursuits don't go on four legs. So quad suits as they're called. So I don't really want to put them in a certain uh, like little realm, and if you've seen um, Magpie Bones is a maker that uses your own eyes, so there's no like resin eye or like a like covering to them. So I don't really want to call them a realistic suit because it doesn't really qualify as one. But then it also does not qualify as a toonie suit, so I just call them experimental. Uh, that's in the middle. That's Magpie Bones, where you like see out of your own eyes. There's school floor suit, like school floor suits, which I don't really know if it qualifies as toonie because it's not really toony. And then, uh, like, uh, that is, I can't remember the name, uh, 
Base. Beauty of the Base. Beauty of the Base, which is like a scary fursuit, which I don't know if it qualifies as toony or realistic, because it's not really either. It's just scary. <laughs> but fun, scary. Next, um, review some data. The rules that I created to then collect data. The fursuit maker needs to have a working website. Some fursuit makers have an extremely outdated website and then they have like a card or like you have to contact them individually to see what the price is. Uh, they need to have base prices available because that's how I collect the data. And then rule number three, first and makers, uh, you cannot sell on private auction or uh, like private quotes. So that actually disqualified a lot of really big makers. One of them was a Made by Lacey because I know one of my friends has a Made by Lacey suit and how he commissioned it was he had to individually go to the artist and say, this is what I'm able to pay, this is what I want, how much will it cost, and then he went through with that. But if there was no base pricing exactly available on their website. You can definitely ask for the data. I have all working links to every single fursuit maker that I archived and I kept, and then uh, all, like the first row is like head only, partial, uh, plantigrade, and then digit grade. And the different colors was dependent on, uh, the blue ones were if they were from Europe. So I was converting from euros or you know pounds to dollars. So that also really depends on the situation with conversion rates, but it's pretty stable. And then um, orange meant that they did not offer the like a head only, or they did not offer like a, a plantigrade or digit grade only. And um, the yellow ones were me making an estimate. So they would offer the price of just a bodysuit, which is like $500 more in comparison to the plantigrade, which is a certain price, and then I would just add that price onto the plantigrade and call that the digit grade base pricing. So that's how I got that. You can definitely like get this after the, like my presentation, feel free. Um, this is what I found. I got 109 fursuit makers in total, like globally around the world. And the cheapest one was 350, which I have recently looked into the artist, and they have upped their prices as well. And the most expensive uh, digit grade was around six thousand dollars, which kind of sounds accurate to how like the average first year price is starting to become. Um, and here's some more data, so you can definitely look at this later if you want to. But uh, like the mean price of a head only is around a thousand dollars for a partial, sixteen hundred, plantar grade twenty six hundred, and then digit grade three thousand one hundred. And uh, it sounds pretty on point, but then also if you've been looking at the prices of fursuits post twenty twenty, they have significantly risen in rate and price. So. Again, this is the head price, so just one head only, around 1,000. Um, then partial, plantigrade, and then digit grade, which I already spoken about, but I like, love digit grade so much. So cute. So let's get a graph, love seeing it. So you can definitely see that there's like a rate going up on the price, which is no duh, because you're paying for more labor, you're paying for more cost, more fur in general, so. I also did not conclude the cost of shipping, import taxes, uh, added sales tax, and complex design, because these were base pricing only. And um, that can really add pricing to it. I know uh, the Made by Lacey fursuit, or the I know, paid $500 in customs and shipping just to get the suit to him. So he was not even taking that into account because he saved a bunch of money for the fursuit paid the entire savings account that he had for it. And then the price of um, the, like the shipping wasn't told to him in the very beginning. So he had to suddenly make that money up somehow, which was kind of frustrating for him. So here's the counter argument. My first suit costs more than my car. I think your data is wrong. I cannot believe that you're saying that it costs $3,000 to get a first suit when I think it was, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the maker. Glitzy Fox in the artist alley, just a mini partial, it's like 3,000 or so. So I feel like your data is wrong and I agree, yes, my data is wrong because it's so difficult to find what an average fursuit price is, especially post COVID or still in COVID, but post lockdown COVID. Um, I only use base prices, so understand that like, if you have 5,000 stripes, uh, a tattoo on top of those stripes and then uh, like a rainbow gradient up your body that is a completely different price. I did not take that into account at all whatsoever. Um, the most popular fursuit makers use auctions, 
So I've seen that with uh, Hound's Teeth. They had a recent auction this past December. A head-only auction ended at $15,000. Cash offer. And I know, I like had a chill down my spine. I feel like I'm having a situation where I'm finally saving up for the base price that they have on their website. I contact them, I try to like get like a fursuit like commission from them. Like, oh, we'll have an auction later, just save up for it. And I go, perfect, I have time to save up another $500 maybe or something. And then I see the auction going from 500 to uh, 9,000 and then 15,000 and I go, okay, it's not working. I know also Zuri Studios recently had an auction that ended at $50,000 for a fursuit. That is the price of, I think, every car I've had in my entire life, plus my liver, kidneys, um, <laughs> probably my heart, uh, both my eyeballs, yeah. I'll be like dead, but I'll have a really amazing fursuit. So, <laughs> it's kind of worth it, kind of worth it. Um, I know Clockwork Creatures as well, they don't have any pricing on their website, but I know it costs, from one person I know, it costs around $20,000 after waiting five years in line and then after doing a down payment just to wait in line, which costs about $10,000. So some fursuit makers are like not only extremely expensive, but you have to wait a very long time just to, not for the fursuit itself, just to get in line for the queue to then be able to talk to them about what you want to get. And uh, again, your data is wrong. You're right. I know. I'm fully aware of this. Uh, inflation also impacted fursuits a lot. Um, a lot of fursuiters are suddenly going, hey, well, if I break down the price of my fursuit, how much am I getting paid per hour? And they realize I'm getting paid pennies on the dollar after taxes, after realizing I'm not getting any sick pay or leave. And I agree with them and I understand that wholeheartedly. And I don't want to undermine or say like, you should lower your prices because it's so much labor that goes into making these. At the same time, it's my situation to where can I justify spending six grand? Because my Subaru costs four grand. I love that thing to death. It gets me from work day and night and everything. But can I justify an animal costume? If I really take a step back, an animal costume I'm going to wear maybe a handful of times per year and maybe do a little photo shoot, post it on Twitter, get my 200 likes or whatever, and uh, justify $6,000, you know, double the price of my car for something like that. So it's this mental gymnastics or like this mathematics I have to do in my head to where can I justify spending this price? And then the artist has to also go, can I justify making it for the price you want it? Because what if I'm just coming out in the negatives? It's not worth it at all. It's not business savvy. So um, again, also for some makers, don't usually turn a profit to a such degree after taxes and then also 401k, they have no sick leave, what about health insurance, you know, there's all these other things you have to take into account. Uh, in conclusion, really, fursuit pricing is a crazy business. No one really knows what the real worth of a fursuit is. It really depends on what you're willing to pay for a fursuit. It also really depends on what you're willing to sacrifice for your character design. If you want a bunch of spots, a bunch of markings and stuff, because you think it's, it's unique, it's awesome, it's cool, but then you realize, that takes the, not only the cost up, but then also the time to then get my fursuit up because they can't make this stuff overnight. They're cutting every piece out individually. They're sewing every piece out individually. I've heard some fursuit makers will also sew everything by hand twice, which then also adds a lot of time into it. So the time, I, I know um, I commissioned a fursuit from my best friend and she told me just pay for the, uh, the price of like the materials and then don't worry about the labor. This is my gift to you. And so I paid for Howl Fabrics expensive quality fursuit like materials, all the foam, high quality uh, shoes and everything. I spent $500 for a full suit. Did you great? And she has a like base price quoting for a digigrade starting at uh, 2,500. So think about it, just $2,000 in labor alone. But then it also took her two years to complete my project. So what's the profit in that really? You know, it, you have to think about it like it. So it's really difficult to find the pricing of a fursuit. And um, long story short, good luck. I can't tell you, <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't overthink it because 
it's just an animal costume at the end of the day. I feel like I should like reiterate that over and over, like take a step back and think about it. Do I have to get something from Made by Lacey or do I have to get something from More for Less? Like if you really want it and that's something you think about on a daily basis, do your best and reach out to the artist and explain, I really want it to be from you. I'm willing to work with you. Uh, you could do, uh, what do you call it? Like a payment plans, you can do other things. Just understand that like you will only be wearing this costume a certain amount or like a handful of times per year. So when you take a step back and you're like, okay, well, am I willing to do this? And the answer is yes, go for it, support the artist. But if you start to feel even a slight amount of doubt, that doubt will only triple after you've paid that certain amount of money. And you finally get the first suit in your hands, you're like, you know what, I just realized I spent like years of like payment plans and stuff to get this fursuit. I've met people who have paid thousands of dollars for a fursuit and they put it on their credit card, which I don't recommend doing that. I would not like have a mortgage for, you know, a fursuit, it's not that worth it. Um, I'd love to open up the entire room and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I can also help with uh, finding fursuits that are used for sale. There's a website called dealersden.com, which I highly recommend. And I have some qualms about the website, but then also it's much easier to buy one used if it's your first one rather than buying one that's brand new. Because the that's process hard. of doing that is really difficult. But if you have any questions, sure. So, sorry. Yes. Sorry. Uh, no, no, he raised his hand first. Sure. I kind of asked this before, but I okay. was going to ask again, like, if you have any data on, have you talked to anybody that this has pushed them to just learn and how to make their own suit? Yes. I genuinely think making a fursuit is not that difficult. I don't think anybody, if you're taking pictures with somebody or you're really concerned about the quality of it, I think it's better if you are the one in control of the fursuit making process. It is not that difficult to find out how to sew. It's not that difficult to find out how to uh, cut fur. There's a lot of information out there, lots of YouTube videos. I would do like 90% research and then 10% actually making the fursuit. So I would spend months and months understanding the way to make a fursuit and then take that time and all that energy you put into it and make one yourself. I, again, it costs around $500 to make a digit grade full suit for all the materials. So you're saving yourself thousands of dollars in the process, and then also you get to be the one to do that. And you realize how much it means to you personally, so it feels more significant to you. Yeah, I think you also had a question. Uh, not much of a question, sure. so, uh, as an observation and my experience here in the first Sure. Uh, you were talking about like input fees and delivery fees and tariffs and things like that. Yes. See, I, when I bought my first suit, that's one thing that I worried about, the, uh, the tariffs. And what I found is that for the United States, I looked at the chapter um, that dictated like how much the rate was, mm -hmm. and I could not find any category where the first suit, uh, like a first suit would fit in. Because it's like a cost, it's a costume. Right. Doesn't that fit under like apparel and clothing though? Yes, but the thing is, there is no specific portion of the US tariff code that dictates that. There's an other section, and the thing is, is that there are three different rates depending on whether the US has an agreement with wherever your fursuit maker is based. Right. And I have a European, um, my fursuit maker is based in Europe. They have an agreement for anything, like any piece of clothing that is up to 2,000 euros or dollars, I forgot. Mm -hmm. That is tariff free. My first thing costs 3,000 bucks. Right. So does it cost $1,000 worth of tariffs or is it all $3,000? And then it's, that rate is it's 15%. So right. then you have to either get some, find some way around the tariff or I may have a solution to that. Sure. You pay for the head separately from the rest of it, and that would probably break up the pricing enough. You would be paying for two times the shipping though. Yeah. And the insurance. Not to, to mention now. shipping. It's perfectly fine if all of the shipping is done through one vendor. If one local shipping company 
hands it off to another shipping company, it's you good. break the tracking. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. And I, yeah, I and I've seen, I've heard that. horror stories about tracking and shipping because you finally paid for the fursuit, it's finally been finished, and then trying to ship it to where you want it to be, it it can be a nightmare. I have um, my fursuit maker for the tuny suit that I got. Uh, was in Texas, was in the local area, so it only took about a week to ship it and $40 to ship it, which if you can find out who your local fursuit makers are, it's way easier to commission and like communicate with them than commissioning somebody from, you know, in Europe, it's also small things like you're trying to communicate with them, you're like, hey, I'm just wondering, uh, how is it going? And you don't hear from them in like a long period of time because they're in a completely different time zone. So it really depends on how anxious you are when it comes to spending thousands of dollars on an animal costume and then wondering if you're gonna hear back from the artist. Always do insured. Yes, my, the uh, PayPal. My suit came in a box that was, one of the one of the creases was completely busted open, the other mm -hmm. side was completely busted open, and I actually ended up losing a friend's badge in there. Oh gosh. And they just, just the, do you get insurance if it's damaged? I they don't really care because it got I'm, to I'm you. Not, I'm not sure how the post office works in terms of that, but I think it, it's lost or damaged. Mm -hmm. um, I think they'll replace it. Replace it as in the fursuit maker has to replace it? Or the... Uh, the post office will... I'm pretty sure they'll pay out however much you got in insurance. Okay. Also, I've seen some fursuit makers or some people like declining insurance because the cost is already so high and they've already spent so much, which is if you're spending already thousands of dollars on an animal costume, I would take the next step and get insurance. I don't care if you have to put it on a credit card. I would much rather have insurance than have nothing at all. So that's really important. I think there's someone else behind you. Are you? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Did your research show anything about prices between a pre-built versus a custom-made one? Did you separate out that data? Like, how much cheaper is a, a pre-made versus a bespoke suit? I did not look at that. I only looked at base pricing for now. In the future, I wanted to, the future of pricing research, understand the cost per hour mainly, and then also seeing if there's a difference in cost per hour for pre-mades versus the cost per hour of the uh, custom suits. Because I feel like custom suits, will have to take more hours because you have to communicate back and forth with the commissioner or like the person who you're like, oh, well, I don't like how these markings look like. Can you fix them? And that takes a couple hours just to replace that. I think personally the uh, pre-made ones are cheaper, but then also you're also taking into account you're not paying for uh, like shipping because you're, you're there. You are the shipping. <laughs> You could say that like the price of getting to the convention is the shipping, but like, not really, you know. Well, that only applies if you don't buy your, your uh, pre-made online. Right. If you buy the pre-made online, it's a different story. But a lot of pre-mades nowadays are using dealers and auctions, so you can't really say, would you call the first price of the first suit the bait, like the actual price, or would you say that the, the whatever it sold for was the price of the first suit? Again. It really depends on what you're willing to pay for the fursuit is the cost of the fursuit, which is the most confusing thing to say on earth, but yes. Um, as far as different fursuit makers, mm -hmm. do you have a list of makers that actually have pretty good reputation? I did, so it, I like removed it from here. Let me look at it. On the side of this, because this like document, the Excel sheet's really big. On the side of it, I did add little notes about the fursuit makers. I, if you look really closely, on one of these. I did include um, Liquid Sunshine Studios and I did add a note to the, like, to the end of it saying, I've heard too many things about this maker, I don't recommend it. I know there's also a website called getfursuit.it or like, it's like fursuitreviews.com. Um, it's the same thing. Um, and people will personally, after they've commissioned the artist, they will say, how much did they spend on it? Um, is it worth it or not? Are they happy with it? What was their experience? So those websites are really important. The issue is a lot of people don't post their experiences on there. So you can only find out about an artist as much as they say their experience was, you know. Sure, any other questions? Yes. Um, in your data, this is kind of like a just curious end use. Um, did you find any trends in your data about um, the end use of the fursuit? Was it all personal? 
Was there any, you know, business use? Was there any, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, convention, mm -hmm. um, other businesses that you might use with fursuit or like mascotting? This was only looking at like fursuit makers within the fandom. I did not look into like professional fursuit makers or professional mascot makers. That'd be a bit, I guess you call that a bit differently. Well, um, I mean, like it seems like the prices might be converging at some point. Yeah, at some point they will. It's definitely post like lockdown COVID situation, the price of a fursuit is starting to get to the amount that, um, what do you call it? Industry professionals, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. because the price of it is starting to really skyrocket in my opinion. But then also the cost of like, I know the main fursuit or like the fur maker is uh, Shannon Fabrics. And Shannon Fabrics just this past year actually discontinued their entire line of uh, luxury fur. So most to all colorful furs we know of that fursuits use just got discontinued. We're not seeing the effect right now because of the fact that a lot of fursuit makers have, like if you've seen pictures of the room covered in fur and they have like a huge collection, but you're starting to see a trend online where people are like, hey, do you have a yard of this fur? Because I can't even find it online. Or how fabric sells out really quickly and you can't get this color ever again. And it quite literally becomes discontinued as if the fur never existed in general. And some people like to stockpile and they don't like to sell it. So we won't see the effects of the Shannon Fabrics luxury uh, shag fur discontinuing until probably next year. And that's another time fursuit prices will skyrocket. It seems like every single time a fursuit maker reopens for commissions, the price of that commission also goes higher by hundreds of dollars. So it kind of becomes like this rush to get the artist before the price becomes extremely expensive. I know um, personally, I tried to commission Hound's Teeth multiple times and uh, I finally saved up for their old base pricing. They, they rised it and at some point they started doing auctions and I was like, I can't pay $20,000 for a fursuit. I'm so sorry. That's like, again, like my liver and kidneys. Like I love that, but I, the fursuit's like so important to me, but I'm not gonna sell that much for it. I think what time it is right now. It is time, so thank you so much for being here. It means a lot. It's my first panel ever, so. If you want the data also, I can give you the data as well. Hi. Yes. Yes. Sure. So, I feel like you have to be a little bit of a program. And you have to be, I'm here for the